Now let's talk about p-values for hypothesis tests about standard deviations. So although you're going to be using the chi-squared table, which has a lot of similarities to the t-table, meaning you know, you're looking in the middle of the table for your test statistic, and you're reading straight up for those p-values, there is an extra step if our test statistic is on the left side of the table. So we'll be seeing that in one of the upcoming cases. And also, similar to the Z, but not the T table, is we're gonna have to double the p-value for a two-tailed test. In the T table, there was a two-tail call um, row at the top, so we always got to just cheat and use that. Case one, the test statistic is on the right side of the table. So as I look at the problem I'm using to find a p-value, first thing I notice is that because the symbol sigma is used, I'm using the chi-squared table. Since I have not equal to in the alternate hypothesis, I'll be using a two-tail two -tail problem, which means I will be doubling my p-value. I'll be going to row n minus one, so row 16, and I'll be looking for the test statistic in the table. So when I go to row 16 and I look for 28.845, it's actually in the table. Very rare, may only happen on a test, but that means I'm gonna read straight up to 0 0.025, and although I wanna use that for my p-value, don't forget that we said we're going to need to double that value since we have a two-tail test. So 0 0.025 times two, which is one way of doubling it, gives me 0 0.05. So my p-value is exactly equal to 0.05. Next problem. As I look at this, again, it starts off with H1, where sigma is the symbol, so I'm using the chi-squared table. I have the greater than symbol, so this means it's a right tail test, and it's a one tail test, so I will not double the p-value. I'll be going to row 28, which is in our table, and I need to find my test statistic. So in row 28, as I'm reading across from left to right, I see 37.916 and then 41.337. So my 39 number is not in the table, but it is in between two values that I see, greater than the 37 number, but less than the 41 number. So I read up to the top of those, and remember I'm not gonna need to double those numbers. I just know that my p-value is in between those values, so I listed it as in between, but when it comes to writing the inequalities, in the past we'd always been writing them as less than symbols, but 10 cents is actually greater than 5 cents, so I'm going to be using the greater than symbol. The notation of sandwiching something in between greater than symbols is not very proper, I guess I'd say, in math, but for p-values I always let it slide. Last example, again, chi-squared table, two-tail test because of not equal to, so I will double my p-value. I'm going to row seven and looking for my test statistic. So in row seven, as I read from left to right, I see the 18.475 number, the 20.278 number, and then I hit the edge of my table. So even though I can see numbers above those, my p-value would be off to the right. So I know that it would be even smaller than the last number given. My p-value is less than 0 0.005, but don't forget we have a two-tail test, so we need to double that number to get 0 0.01, sorry. So my p-value is less than 0 0.01.